Hello everyone. My name is Walid bin Kaim from Tampere University, Finland. And in this video, we are going to talk about connectivity solutions in the Internet of Wearable Things. So here is a brief outline of our discussion today. First things first. So before we start our discussion about the Internet of Wearable Things, we need to understand that this term is basically a combination of two different terminologies which are Internet of Things and Wearables. Internet of Things is defined as the interconnection of devices with each other through the Internet, which makes the devices easy to access and control remotely as desired. For instance, this figure here on the left shows an overall picture of the IoT technology where your everyday devices, including your personal gadgets, to your home appliances, to your car and office equipment, all are connected to the internet cloud, which enables you to access all your devices from anywhere, anytime through the internet. Whereas wearable is a mobile device that can be carried by subjects, which can be humans or animals, to observe, record, and communicate some sort of physical phenomena happening around the device. For instance, wearable can be a smartwatch, smart glasses, smart helmet, a smart ring, or a smartphone, etc. Now that we know what are wearables and what is Internet of Things, Internet of Wearable Things is basically defined as wearables connected to each other and to the Internet, which form the Internet of Wearable Things. Now the wearable technology may include your personal uh, devices and gadgets, for instance, your smartphone, your smartwatch, smart ring, smart clothes, to your fitness gadgets, for instance, smart shoes, smart socks, and also healthcare devices. For instance, somebody might have a health monitoring uh, device attached to the body and also including some virtual reality equipment, for instance, Google Glass or uh, virtual reality glasses and so on. So all of these things basically fall under wearables and, and connectivity of all such devices forms the internet of wearable things. Now wearables can be classified in several different ways. Based on wearability, I like to classify them into in-body, on-body and around-body wearables. Now in-body wearables are those electronic equipment which are implant, implanted or they reside inside human body. For example, hearing implants for the deaf people, or implants for the medically paralyzed patients with robotic limbs. So such wearables are actually placed inside human body, so they can be called in-body wearables. Whereas the on-body wearable devices are all those devices which can be worn on human body during everyday routine. For example, the smartwatch, smart ring, or smart shoes, etc. Now there is quite a debate among the scientific community whether devices like smartphone, smart ID card, or smart bank card can be called wearables or not because we don't actually wear them on our body. But I like to classify them as around body wearables because we carry them everywhere, almost everywhere we go. And also they have similar features to any other wearable, so they can be safely classified as around body wearables. Wearables can also be classified based on their connectivity. For instance, we can have standalone wearables or connected wearables. Standalone wearable is a device that is used for some specific purpose and does not connect to any other device around it. For example, you may have a fitness wristband that only records and displays your step counts and heartbeat, but it does not connect to the internet or some other device around it. Whereas most of the wearable devices that we have today are connected wearables. And connected wearable is a device that connects with other devices around it and to the internet to perform its task. For instance, you can have a smartwatch to quickly preview the received text messages on your cell phone or check the call logs for the day. So all such devices are basically connected wearables which form the internet of wearable things. Connectivity in the Internet of Wearable Things is mostly through wireless communication, which makes wearables convenient to carry and use. And some of the most commonly used wireless connectivity solutions for wearables include Bluetooth, Zigbee, and Wi-Fi.
Before we look into some of the most commonly used connectivity solutions in Internet of Variable Things, it's important to understand some major requirements and challenges. For instance, first of all is power consumption. As we know, most of the variable devices are battery-powered devices, so it's important to know and minimize the amount of power consumed by the device in its operation and communication. Secondly, range of the device is also very important because a device has to communicate or connect to other devices around it. Third, latency, which defines the time a device takes to communicate with some other device around it. And finally, data rate, which is the amount of data communicated per second. So all these are some important requirements and challenges for any connectivity solution in the Internet of Wearable Things. Here in this table, we compare some of the most commonly used connectivity solutions in the Internet of Wearable Things. We have Wi-Fi versus the conventional Bluetooth versus Bluetooth Low Energy versus Zigbee. We can see that Wi-Fi has can offer the highest range of up to 250 meters as compared to other technologies. However, it also consumes a very high power where Bluetooth Low Energy offers the least power consumption of around 10 milliwatts. But also data rate, if we look at the data rate, Wi-Fi can support the highest data rate, whereas Zigbee has the lowest data rate of only 250 kilobits per second. Also, the operating frequency of each solution is different. And another important factor is network size, where Zigbee has the highest network size, or we can say it can support a very large network of, of over 65,000 devices per network, whereas Bluetooth and Bluetooth Low Energy can support very limited devices in one network. And finally, the last row gives some of the target applications for all of these connectivity solutions. So all in all, we can say that every technology has some pros and cons and some benefits and drawbacks or one another. In conclusion, we can say that for better connectivity, there is no fit for all solution. There are several trade-offs involved in optimizing the performance of a variable for any specific application. However, understanding the nature of the application along with the associated requirements and constraints is the key to select the best suitable communication technology. And thank you for watching.